Because we are fallen creatures living in a fallen world, and because we have an incredibly intelligent but malicious, nasty enemy, there are many, many challenges to getting established in a really serious and growing and mature prayer life. So let's look at the biggest challenge to growing in prayer. The biggest challenge, without doubt, to growing in prayer and maturing in prayer is establishing a discipline of praying every single day. Now, that's the thing the devil most wants to keep you from. Recall the words that are quoted in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, when Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Now, keep in mind that that's just the second part of John 10:10. 10, 10. The first part reads, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. So you see, we see God's plan and the devil's plan. The devil wants to steal the spiritual fruit that is born of a really serious life of prayer. He wants to kill your motivation and commitment to pray on a regular, on a daily basis. And essentially, he wants to destroy your relationship with God with the hope of robbing you of salvation in Christ Jesus. That's why he attacks your prayer life. There is nothing more important to maturing as a Christian and deepening your relationship with God than to pray on a daily basis. And there is no greater danger to the enemy than a disciple who prays. Teresa of Avila is a doctor of the church and was a great mystic. And she was named doctor of the church precisely because of her teaching on prayer and the call to holiness, growing in holiness, and how we can all attain that. And she says some remarkable things about prayer. We just want to touch on a few today. The first thing she tells us is that most Christians never get past the first mansions. Now recall, in Teresa's model of the spiritual life, the interior life, there are seven mansions, seven degrees seven stages, if you will, that we grow through, that the Holy Spirit takes us through to bring us to a very deep transforming union with God and ultimately to holiness. So this is sobering to discover that most Christians never get past the first of those seven mansions. The primary reason is because they only pray sporadically, typically when they need something or on a special occasion. The second thing she tells us is that the door into the second mansions. So this is significant, right? To, to begin to make some progress, to move out of the first mansions into the second mansions, the door is daily prayer. She also tells us that of those who get beyond the first mansions, the majority never get past the third mansions. Recall again, the first three mansions in Teresa's model corresponds to the first of three stages in the other model referred to as the three ways. So the first three mansions means you're still a beginner in the spiritual life. You're still in the purgative stage. So that's a sobering thought, right? To know that even having made progress from the first, second, and third mansions, we're still beginners in the spiritual life. Now that's the reason Linda and I are so committed and insistent on teaching about prayer and encouraging you to get serious about prayer, to get, get that prayer life established so that the Holy Spirit can really move you forward in your interior life. Over 20 years ago, God began to send folks to Linda for spiritual direction. Now, she was a bit surprised at this. This was not something that she sought after. But before too long, she discovered that she has a real gift, a real knack, a gift from the Lord, obviously, to help people discern, to identify where the grace of God is in their lives, what God is doing in their lives, and how to best cooperate with that grace. So when she meets with someone for the first time, there are two ground rules that she establishes right off the bat. The first is that they must meet on a regular basis, ideally four to five weeks, but certainly no longer than eight weeks should elapse between meetings. The second ground rule, they must pray on a daily basis. And for most, that's their biggest challenge. Praying on a daily basis is not an easy thing to do, not in the culture that we're currently living in. 
It costs us something. We have to want it, we have to choose it, we have to pursue it, we have to persevere, we have to be determined and trust in the grace of God. But the grace of God will be there. So to encourage you in all that, we want to share with you three examples of how the grace of God can be at work in three very, very different lives. The first is my own life. Now, I was a high school student when I was invited to attend a retreat. I encountered the Lord in a personal way and I surrendered my life to Him. And very shortly after that, I learned that now I, I needed to start praying every day. And I tried to do that. The operative word being tried to do that. Now, I actually failed miserably. It took not only years, it took me decades to get firmly established in a discipline of personal prayer. Now, group prayer was a different thing. I loved praying with groups, music and worship and praise and all that stuff. I could do that for hours. I had a great facility and an ease to do that. But I discovered that when I was alone in a room with the door shut, I would begin to feel anxiety. I'd essentially have a panic attack. So obviously that was an obstacle to personal prayer is that my experience of personal prayer was primarily characterized by anxiety. But the grace of God, after many years of healing and deliverance and bringing to God you know, the, the, the issues, the core issues, the brokenness and the sin in my own life, God was able to deliver me from enough of those things that I was able to begin to establish a daily discipline of prayer. Now I'm at a point where I love spending extended periods of time alone in a room with the Lord. So that's a testimony of God's grace, but it's also a testimony of the fact that you may be among those who have to really fight for it and persevere and hang in there, but you can do it. God can do that in you. You can trust that. You can trust that. That You can take that to the bank, if you will. God is there and He wants that for you. And so His grace is there for you. The second illustration is very different from mine, and that's in the life of Linda. So Linda came to the Lord as a school teacher. So she encountered the Lord in a personal way. She made a radical surrender of her life and made some very, very radical changes in her life, in her lifestyle, her friends, the books she read, the music she listened to, really, really decided to go for it. And again, very early on, was told that now she was to pray every day. That's, that's part of following the Lord and, and pursuing the Lord is to pray every day and to pray an hour every day. So what did Linda do? She set her alarm clock an hour earlier, got up an hour earlier, and spent an hour in prayer. For her, it was that simple and direct and immediate. Now, that's not to say it didn't cost her. There was a cost. There was a great cost at times. But the point was, the grace was there, the will, and Linda, all you know, the various things that had made her who she was and brought her to that point, and she was ready, and she, she never questioned that. And so from that day, she has been praying at least uh, uh, you know, an hour every day, and in many cases, uh, considerably more than that. And she has never questioned that, which is why she is able to encourage people to pursue that in their own lives. She knows it's possible, just as I know it's possible. The third story is somewhat humorous. The friend of ours named Adam. Now, at the time that he came to give his life to the Lord, he was a university student. And again, made a really significant encounter and a really genuine and sincere surrender. And so shortly after that, he began to uh, see someone, a, a priest, I believe, for spiritual direction. And his director told him the same thing that Linda tells her directees. He had to start praying on a daily basis. The ideal was an hour every day. Now, Adam was a capable young man. He, at that point, he was doing his master's in engineering. He was very intelligent, very capable, very gifted. He couldn't pray an hour every day. His schedule was such that he had the, the potential to pray every day, but he couldn't do it. So he goes to his director after an extended period of time and, and just a failure. And this director said to him, all right, well, look, Adam, let's go to 30 minutes a day, all right? But daily, that's the key. Couldn't do 30 minutes. He said, okay, let's go to 10 minutes a day. Okay, give me 10 minutes a day, that's all. And uh, Adam couldn't do the daily requirement of 10 minutes every day. So finally his director, I think um, by the wisdom of God, but somewhat frustrated, said to him, Adam, all right, here's what we're looking for. 
one minute every day. Adam was so embarrassed, so humiliated that he'd gotten to that point where he was going to be required of only one minute a day that everything kind of, something clicked in him and something engaged in him and he began to pray an hour every day. Many years later, he's now a very, very prayerful priest, beautiful, faithful priest who loves the Lord and loves prayer and uh, can teach on it very well as well. So again, here, here you have three examples of a very, very different um, scenario, right? But the, in each case, what do we find? The grace of God is there. The will of God is there. The grace of God is there. But our cooperation is needed. And as long as we do that and we seek after God and pursue and persevere, God can do that in us. And so that puts us in a place where the Holy Spirit can move us forward more quickly, more steadily, more stably. So if you're not praying on a daily basis yet, you can do it. God wants it for you. You surely, in your heart of hearts, you want it. And so we encourage you to go after God, pray for the grace, seek after Him, and know and trust that He can do that in and through you. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.